Welcome to 15th century Northern Europe, and before we get into the art, I want to provide you with some historical context so you understand what's going on in the world as we move forward. First, during this period, you're going to see the Hundred Years' War, and this is going to be a continuation. Uh, the English and the French are constantly going at it. They're constantly fighting. There was even a time between World War I and World War II where the British actually thought the next World War would be between them and the French. So we see this constant conflict continuing through the period. We also see the rise of the popes and anti-popes. What happens is the papacy will move and then move back to Rome, and the French are not keen on that because they had moved to Avignon in France. So you get two papacies. At one point, we have three popes, and arguably at one point, we actually have four. So very difficult period for the church. We see a great deal of social turmoil because feudalism will disappear. This is due to the Black Death. What happens is they kill off so much of the labor market that the laborers that are left go from being serfs to being paid because you have to. If you don't, they tend to leave your farm and find someone who will pay them. So the Black Death causes some major turmoil there. We also see the development of European capitalism. This idea that businesses should be allowed to run and be allowed to run freely. Now, it doesn't look like capitalism does today. We have the guilds and everything else in Northern Europe, just like we have in Italy. But we see that start of what we would recognize as capitalism today, as well as new systems of credit, exchange, and monetary systems. Art will begin to become secular, and it develops a certain private patronage in Northern Europe. So what happens is Northern Europe, of course, is physically farther from Rome, so they don't feel the need to be as perfect when it comes to their forms of Christianity. They aren't going to feel the need to live their lives completely around the ideas of Christianity like we see in Italy. As a consequence, they tend to start looking a little more secular. And we're going to see that as an overall theme. We're also going to see private patronage quite a bit. People commissioning pieces of art, not just for the community like we see in Italy, but also for their private homes quite often. Finally, we see oil paints, and this is a huge shift. Now, we came across oil paints in Italy a little bit, especially people like Titian and Leonardo, but you're going to see them used far more often in Northern Europe. That's where they really get introduced into Europe. Now, tempera paints are what they would have classically used up until this point. Tempera paints are egg and honey and pigment mixed together, and they dry fairly quickly. The colors are, well, not bad, uh, but oil paints, the advantage is it takes hours, days, or weeks to dry, so the artist can go back and alter elements. They can create gradients of color. They can basically blend color in ways that they can't in tempera because tempera dries in 20 minutes, whereas oils, you have a considerably longer period of time. And here we see two paintings, one by Michelangelo in tempera and one by Leonardo in oils, or sorry, by Titian in oils. And you can see some of that difference. The tempera has this immediacy to it. Michelangelo has to work very, very quickly or in a series of glazes, whereas Titian can work uh, more slowly, more deliberately. He can play with things like atmosphere. We have that overall brown tone atmosphere with Titian's work that we don't really see in Michelangelo's. Michelangelo is creating something that's more fresco. In fact, tempera and fresco are very, very similar in terms of drawing times, properties, and other things. So we see that difference, and we're going to see that in Northern European art. Most everything that we see will be in oils.